going to talk about five of the most common problems that we come across when we first start to use Pluspec. And the first thing is, is that you've imported your plan and you've used a high definition, but the plan isn't clear to see. You can't read the dimensions properly, it's all fuzzy. Here's exactly how to fix it. Go up to Window, go to Preferences. Inside of Preferences, you'll scroll down to OpenGL and then you'll notice that it has Use Maximum Texture Size. Click that and then click Yes. What that's basically saying is you're, you're adding a high resolution image and if you're not careful when you add a high resolution image, it will actually slow down the model. Now if you've got a decent computer with a decent process and graphics card, adding a plan at high resolution will not be a problem. However, if you are doing that, you can, inside of your PDF import, you can choose a lower resolution. Now good is sufficient for most plans, however better uh, might be better. If you go to best, you're going to put more information in. I guess an analogy is it's like putting too many bricks in the back of a ute, it will slow down. Okay, now here's a model that's actually just been created by a new user, um, probably an hour into it. And the question was, how do I add trusses uh, so that I have a hip end on both ends? And I think that's a good question. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my Scenes tool first. And basically what this is going to do is enable me to segment my model. So essentially, you'll notice it created these things across the top here, which is basically giving me elevations, sections, a whole heap of different things. However, I want to look at my structural scene to add trusses. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this down and I'm going to go to my Roof tool and go to my Truss tool. And what I can do here is I can choose the type of truss. Now, you'll notice if you hover over on the left-hand side, you'll see instructions. However, most people would know what a hip truss, a common truss, and a Dutch gable truss are. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to choose my hip truss, and I'm going to actually zoom in to where I would draw that truss from. And a common mistake would be to draw your trusses all the way to the end there and expect it to create a hip on both ends. Well, that's not going to work because when you draw trusses, you actually start halfway when you draw your trusses, and you'll notice that it actually created uh, my trusses there. Now, if I actually change my setback of my trusses and my spacing of my trusses, let's say 600 centers, and I would go from here, and then I would work my way back. However, I don't need an end truss because I already have a truss I'm going to butt into. Right. What I should have actually done is when I drew my first trusses, I should have actually taken my hip truss off there. Now I'm going to just delete that again and delete this here and do it again properly. Go to my roof tool, go to my truss tool, choose the truss type. If it's a hip truss or a Dutch gable, you must go halfway. Even if it is a gable, you would go end to end. So I'm going to do a gable truss here. Uh, and I'm going to do my first, my span, and then I'm going to find the center. You'll notice as I go along here, it clicked and snapped to a point. That is actually the center. I don't want an end truss. Right, so go to here, put that truss in, and away I go. You'll notice I actually, um, by mistake, actually did that the wrong way. So I'm going to delete that again. I'm going to go back to my truss here, and when you scroll down, if you're not careful, you're inside of the um, the the tools. You can choose the wrong thing. So if I scroll down here, it can actually scroll this column here. So the best thing to do is to click out of it. Now I don't want to include valley trusses. All right, so I'm going to go to here, here, find my center point, and I now have my truss. And you can see if I needed an overhang on both ends, I would go to there. And that would mean that this is the right amount of trusses. If this truss wasn't here, I would be over my maximum spacing. So put end truss needs to be ticked off if that is the scenario you're looking for. The next question that I have is uh, when you've actually got walls drawn and you've got a plan drawn and what's happening is that when you try and move the walls, the plan isn't moving with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here, I'm going to go submit, I'm going to quickly go and trace around this plan. Right, I can see that this plan isn't to scale, so there's a problem there as well. What happens is that when you import a plan from uh, PDF, you have to actually give it a scale. So I, You'll notice if I go on my space bar and I click on it, the plan's gone blue. I would then go up to my tape measure tool and I would grab my scale tool and I would try and find the longest measurement on this plan. And I can see down here, I have 33,700. So I'm gonna scroll right in. Very important to learn to scroll right in. 
I click on my left click there and I'm actually going to scroll out from the left hand side and notice that the right hand side of the, the plan is actually coming into view. That's an important tip, uh, something that all of you should know. And I'm going to scroll right in and I'm going to click in the center of the dimension line and write 33700 and then click enter. Right. I'm working in metric. If you're an imperial, you write it in an imperial and you would choose an imperial template. And now when I go and draw my walls, I use the keyboard shortcut there to open my walls. My walls will actually be drawn to scale. I would choose the construction method in this drawing, which is lightweight cladding. And I will start to trace around the plan. Notice I'm scrolling out from the left to go right. That's really important. Scroll out from the top to go down. These are the most important tips. Now, I'm just going to draw a couple of walls here and I'm going to show you a better way to actually do this because these are common problems that we see all the time. So what I'm going to do is first things first is I'm actually going to draw a line. So I'm going to use the line tool which is L as a keyboard shortcut and I'm going to actually trace over this dimension line. 33700. So if I type in 33700, I'm in millimeters and go enter. I now know that the plan is to scale that way. I'm also going to do the same on an opposite end here. So I'm going to actually go to the end of this dimension string here. I used L as a keyboard shortcut instead of going up to the top. Scroll out from the bottom. I've got 33100. 33100. Enter. Okay. Now I can see that my plan is to scale in both directions. That's really important. If it isn't, uh, you can scale the plan individually, but I'm not going to get into that today. Now the next thing that we want to do, so we actually know where to trace on this plan, is we're going to grab the tape measure tool, which you should see at the top uh, of your toolbar there. And I'm actually going onto my tape measure. If I work on the end, it will not work. You need to go until your line is red there. And I'm actually going to do it until I got to the end of the 33700 line that I did. And what I can do now is if I go from here, I can type in 2500. Right, and what it's actually showing me is where the outside of my line is. And it's like a string line. It's a really good way to, to do things. You can see that I have measurements on my plan here. And if I type in 4900, I now actually have a guide. If I did the same on the opposite, I can start here and I can go up 7500. Now you can put these dimensions on layers so that you, you can separate your internal and external. But I'm, at the moment, I'm going to do them all the same and just show you what this is doing. Right, it's a string line that I can trace. And then I've got one more at 900 here. 900, enter. Okay, one more I'm going to put up here, which is at the end of my dimension string here. And I have one more. I'm going to come back from this end, 3300. Right. Now I can actually go through and trace these walls very, very simply. So if I go to, I created a keyboard shortcut, which is W, which will ask me to actually take you to here. If you want to learn how to create a keyboard shortcut, you can see some of the other videos in creating keyboard shortcuts. Now that I have these string lines, I can actually now work off the plan the way that it's drawn. So it will snap. You'll notice there it snapped. I'm going to zoom in there, I'll have a look. See that it snapped to a point? Saves me going and typing in a whole heap of dimensions. Scroll out to the right, move into the left, and this enables me to be more accurate when I'm drawing my plans. That's probably the biggest tip that I can give anyone who's new to, to starting this. I'm just going to double click there, and you can see that I now have those walls. Now, another question that I got was how do I move my plan and my walls all in one go? And the answer is, is that if you want to move everything inside of the model, if I go control A, what it did is it selected everything. That means everything that's inside of this model is selected. And if I wanted to move it, I would actually move my plan. And you'll notice when I move things, I have the capacity to move it on a green axis or on a red axis. All right? I could also move it up. So if I actually push my up arrow on my keyboard, it will move up and it will lock to that. If I push my left arrow, it will lock to green. If I push my right arrow, it will lock to red. Everything is selected. So the key to moving everything is selecting everything that you want to. Now, in some cases, you are going to only want to move a couple of things. So if I actually selected just say one item and I pushed move, which is M as a keyboard shortcut, I can just move this wall individually. I don't really recommend moving walls individually. You can actually select multiple walls. So if I go spacebar, 
and then push my shift button and then I select multiple walls here everything that's selectable now moves so I'm going to push M as a keyboard shortcut and I'm going to move it all those walls will move together right if I go escape they'll go back to where they came from and you can see that I missed a wall there so I can actually go and push spacebar and shift again and the plans and now everything will move independent of my guidelines I hope that helps out guys because it's a really important thing that you need to know although I do not think that you should be moving your plans around you should put your plans in the right position to start and then I would actually lock them in some cases so if I clicked on that and go right click lock I really want to draw to my plans and then that way I would move any geometry around if I needed to now there's one more question that I actually get reasonably regularly is how do I insert lintels now there's two types of lintels these walls that I've drawn in here are actually clad walls so a clad wall uh, lightweight cladding wouldn't wouldn't require a brick lintel so if I actually went up to here and I'll draw a masonry veneer wall and I'll just draw it on this line here double click and I now have a, a masonry veneer wall just a common brick okay so there's two types of lintels there's a lintel that actually holds up our top plate and there's a lintel that holds up our brick so if I actually go and create my scenes here and go submit it enables me to actually break this into either structure or if I go back to all I can see everything you can also use see all here if you like to use a 2d mode use the 2d button to do that now I'm going to talk about lintels I'm going to actually uh, put this in structural view so we can talk about a, a lintel first now when I draw my wall for the first time I'm going to go back here I'm going to explain this is the wall can either be a structural wall or a non-structural wall right no it means non-structural if it's non-structural it will not put a lintel in if it's structural and it's holding roof load or floor load and roof load it will put a lintel in right so if I go here and I'll go and change my lumber type to from steel and I'll change it into uh, say a timber right and we'll choose a standard sort of size which is 90 by 45 and I go and draw this wall in here it is a structural wall so if I put a window in it I right click go to windows add window it will put a lintel in for me and I'm just going to go by default here and just click this in here it now put in a lintel and a load bearing point however I can change the size of that lintel in my window section so I can go through and change my lintel size and I'll just put a 190 by 45 in here and when I zoom in here you'll notice that I have two different lintel sizes right 190 by 45 and here I have 140 by 35 okay so that's how to do a lintel in a wall now if I actually go back to all here and I look at this wall and I go into a transparent mode an x-ray mode you'll notice that it has a flat bar in here but it has an angle in here because this is a brick wall however if I drew a, a window in here obviously we don't need those lintels when I do a takeoff I'll go right click and take off just the selection in plus design build and if I go to my masonry and my masonry hardware I can actually see that I have a flat bar lintel at 1.2 meters and I have an angle at 1.58 meters so I hope that helps explain a lintel uh, in a frame and in brickwork now, here's one more problem and the last one for the day is you'll notice that these toolbars um, they're kind of taking a lot of screen space and they can be a problem uh, you start to get less screen and more space for tools I'm going to show you how to deal with that I'm just going to go back to my model and you'll notice I have mine nice and neat and tidy and I actually use two screens and sometimes I'll just put what I don't want on my main screen and my screen to the left and I can still access it if I need to but you can also dock things if I right click up here and add more tools let's say I wanted to use the solid tool you'll notice that it actually took screen space out and I can quite easily grab that toolbar and drag it down here and then it will say there to do that you want to save your model and and essentially it will save the location of your toolbars also the default tray I actually have it off by default uh, and I actually pin it when I actually need it on and I unpin it when I need it off and that way you get more screen space screen space is the key 
using the 2D tools uh, to navigate is helpful because I'm looking at 2D parallel projection top down. If I click it again, it'll give me a 3D mode. And when we're drawing, you'll, you may have added cornice or baseboard or crown molding into your model, but you're not seeing it when you start to draw. That's because you need to click the see all button. Now I haven't drawn it in these models, but in your wall tool, if you had selected down the bottom in your trim, see all will show you that. But the reason why we don't have it on, because if I went to draw an internal wall, and I'll just draw an internal wall here with some trim, uh, choose my wall type, internal only, and I'm going to put on some skirting or baseboard, depending on where you're at. I'm gonna put it on both sides, and I'm also gonna put in some uh, cornice or crown molding, I'm going to put on both sides of the wall. Now the problem with drawing in see all is that when I actually draw this wall, it drew everything that I wanted to, so my skirting uh, architraves and everything like that. However, if I went back to my structure mode, you'll notice that there's a gap between my frame because I drew it from the, the thickness of my internal lining. So the key in there and the, the trick to be mindful of is to draw in your 2D mode and therefore you will not get this problem. There are some other benefits as well. If I drew from here, it's actually going to draw on top of the wall because where I drew from selected the top of the wall. And I do suggest that to, to learn how to, to solve this problem is you need to actually go to uh, your levels tool and you need to actually do the tutorial inside of the levels tool. I'm going to quickly show you, I'm going to add a level. Uh, here I'm going to write walls, ground floor, and I'm going to make it active, right? So if I try and draw from up here, it actually drew it down where I wanted to. However, if I put a height in here, my level start was zero and the top of my wall was 2740 and I went active and I drew, uh, sorry, on level two here and active. Saved and updated. Active wall. It will draw the walls at the height according to what it is you're trying to do there. So I'm going to go back and draw my wall again. All right, as you can see, I'm at the height that I decided to draw. And no matter if I drew down here, it's still going to draw at that height. Watch the tutorials inside of the levels tool because this will help you understand how to draw. And when you're drawing in 2D parallel projection, you wanna make sure that you've got the, you're have got you on the right level when you decide to draw. Hope it helps, guys. If you have any further questions or anything like that, please add them down below in this video and we can answer any questions and try and make your job a lot easier. If you like the video, push like. If you dislike the video, push dislike, but make sure you tell us why, because we're going to, we're here to improve your workflow. Cheers, guys.